Welcome to the seven part power query challenge, which is intended to help you practice your skills in this very underrated tool in Microsoft Excel. Power Query is about transforming your data, automating that process to save you hours and hours of time. So throughout this challenge, the first three parts are going to be dedicated to specific skills, grouping rows, dealing with stacked data, and then extracting data from certain columns. And the next four sections will focus on specific tasks or use cases. So we'll be dealing with an SAP report, a student grades data set, a passenger airline transport data set, and a final challenge to deal with dynamic header rows. As we move through each part, I'll introduce the exercise and what is required of you. I recommend you have a go at solving each one before I take you into Power Query to show you my particular solution. Now it's worth bearing in mind that with all of these problem sets, there's often more than one way of doing it. And that's what's interesting to me is to see how different people solve different problems. So don't worry if you don't have exactly the same solution. If you're not particularly familiar with Power Query, how to use it and how it can save you time working and manipulating data in Excel, I recommend you check out our Power Query Fundamentals course, where we'll take you through all of the key concepts and functionality of this tool, how you can manipulate data, combine files from different locations and deal with errors and help you get started in this tool. In the meantime, Good luck with the exercises. I look forward to taking you through these different challenges where you'll be able to turn data that looks messy like this into something that looks far more usable like this table summary on the left hand side. As we go through each of the challenges, I'll also show you little hints and tricks as to how to make your workflow more efficient. I'm also going to show you some useful data sources like Eurostat, where some of our data is drawn from, and you can get tons more data sets from here. And I'll also show you some examples of Power Query documentation and how you can use that to check the functions that you're using. I hope you find this a useful format to practice Power Query and develop your problem solving skills. Good luck. Welcome to the first part of this Power Query challenge. In this workbook, you're going to find two tabs, each of which is a separate task. At the top of the tab, I've outlined the scenario that you're working with. So in this case, each week you tend to receive this table of product purchases. And each time you receive it, you do all these manual data transformations to create this summary that you see on the right hand side. We're working with consolidation of groups here or categories. And so your task is to use Power Query to recreate this output table, perform whatever transformations you need and output your output in the right hand side here. You'll notice that in Power Query itself, I've provided some suggested solutions for each of the two tasks, but I do suggest that you have a go at solving this yourself before you look at my solution. In addition, if you're a little stuck and you want to refer to some of the key concepts from our Power Query Fundamentals course, check out the links below this video. Welcome to the first part of this Power Query challenge. In this workbook, you're going to find two tabs, each of which is a separate task. At the top of the tab, I've outlined the scenario that you're working with. So in this case, each week you tend to receive this table of product purchases. And each time you receive it, you do all these manual data transformations to create this summary that you see on the right hand side. We're working with consolidation of groups here or categories. And so your task is to use Power Query to recreate this output table, perform whatever transformations you need and output your output in the right hand side here. You'll notice that in Power Query itself, I've provided some suggested solutions for each of the two tasks, but I do suggest that you have a go at solving this yourself before you look at my solution. In addition, if you're a little stuck and you want to refer to some of the key concepts from our Power Query Fundamentals course, check out the links below this video. Let's take a look at how we might solve the two parts of this challenge. Now it's worth noting that as we go through the solutions, my way is just one of many possible ways of achieving the same output. So you may have come up with a different one. 
In particular, I'm looking for minimal query steps where possible, but also simplicity in being able to explain what I'm doing to another analyst, for example. It doesn't make too much difference on these simpler tasks in the first few parts, but in later parts you'll see that as the complexity grows, simplicity is important. First, let's get the data into Power Query from this table. So clicking anywhere in this predefined tabular range, we're going to hit from table or range. In Power Query, I'm going to rename this so it's clear. We'll call it 1A answer. Now, first things first, if there's an opportunity to remove data that I don't need, I'm going to take it. So in this case, product and date can be removed. I need to multiply price by quantity. So selecting those two columns, going to add column, let's use multiply. Now multiplication here isn't a very informative column name. So perhaps we can call that total cost instead to make it clear to anyone else reading through this query exactly what this is doing. We can remove these two columns now using the remove button in the home tab. And all we're left to do now is use group by on the category column to group category, create a new column name again with the same total cost name, but this time we want to sum across the total cost values by category. So we're going to add up these three values for fruit, these two values for vegetables, and so on. So that was the output we were asked to provide. If we close and load that, we can select a table in the existing worksheet and place that in the output area. And perhaps the only thing I would change here to make the output easier to read is that either I would sort that table by values from highest to lowest, or perhaps sort the categories in alphabetical order if that's how I like to look at the report. Now for the second part, the key was also to look at grouping, but this time we weren't looking for an aggregation of values, but simply a count of the occurrences of those values. So here we've got three fruit values, and so we see a three in the product count. We have two in the dairy category, and so we see a two over here. So how do we achieve that in Power Query? We click on the source table, go to data from table or range, Again, I'm going to rename it so that I don't lose track of what each query is for. So initially I just see the input table. The only column I really need this time is the category column itself. So I've got two options here. Either I select all of the other columns and remove them, or I click on the category column and I use the remove other columns function. Now I tend to prefer this option, reason being, if other columns one day appear in this report, I know that I still only need the category column. And so I want to ensure that that is the only column I keep. So doing it the second way just future proofs my query a little bit. So let's remove other columns. We keep category. Let's group by that column. And as per the original suggestion, I'm going to call this product count. And we're simply going to count the rows. The final suggestion in the task was to present the table alphabetically by category. So let's do that. Sort ascending on category. We can close and load that to our output range. And there is our finished data. Group by is one of those functions that you'll be using a lot in Power Query. And it really helps you change the level of detail in the output that you're providing. It helps you consolidate data and provide summaries and you'll be using it extensively in the more complex challenges later on. For those of you that are still new to Power Query, I just wanted to show you how powerful doing these transformations in Power Query really is. What we've done is to program a set of steps that can be automatically repeated when our input data changes. So in our original table of 1A here, suppose we had a new product. So let's put grapes in the fruit category Let's say the price is two, the quantity is five, and let's just pick a date to put there in the report. In the past, when we got this new report, we'd have to do all of those transformations again. Now that we've got Power Query, we can simply right click on the output table and hit refresh. 
you can see that this table now provides a different value for fruit than the other query, which hasn't been refreshed. Now that we've done both, we have those updated values. This works whether our input data is in this file or whether it comes from another file perhaps or a database. All we need to do is refresh the query. So that's the beauty of Power Query. It's going to save us so much time transforming data and give us more time back to actually analyze data and make decisions.